Hello, everyone. Super excited to meet you all virtually. Uh, thank you to the Source Labs team for bringing SourceCon 2022 and having me here. As users, uh, we like to have seamless user experience all the time, right? And performance is one factor which directly impacts the user experience. Even if we deliver a brilliant feature with performance issues, people will eventually stop using our application because performance plays a vital role when it comes to user retention. As high-performing apps are user favorites, the need for performance-centric strategies uh, for testing mobile applications has also increased. And today, uh, we will be taking a quick deep dive on this topic. So let me start with the story first uh, from our old days where we never thought of client-side performance tests, mainly because we never realized the necessity of doing so. So this is an interesting comic which I found from Google, uh, which literally shows the situation we had in the past and it shows what went wrong for us uh, when we know the client side performance testing part so we had a framework migration for our android application where we were fully focusing on the functionality testing part because we thought if we uh, cover everything functionally uh, and make sure everything works as expected compared to before it will be same in the production as well right so we tested everything uh, based on the functional aspect and uh, our results were super cool that gives us the confidence to ship the application and we ship it uh, so we ship our application to production and then things started to go wrong right so we started getting reports saying that our app was having rendering issues our app was having uh, transactional, is transactional issues and then uh, it was consuming more battery than before it was consuming more space because the app size severely increased a lot uh, all of which which contributes uh, and made us realize that client-side performance test is really important before we launch the application. So we were forced during that time, we were forced to revert back the changes and fix everything and ship it again. So uh, same as in the picture, our app literally sank. And uh, today I'm here to share uh, some insights on based on our story so that you could make sure uh, and you can avoid this thing happening again in your application testing lifecycle. So uh, let me introduce myself first. My name is Nitin and I'm an engineering manager at FAVE Malaysia. I was born and raised in India where I started my career in testing. As someone who loves the testing craft, I'm fortunate enough to continue my passion by leading a wonderful team at FAVE and building a community driven space for testers called Synapse QA. So let's get started. So let's talk the basics first, right? So when I started uh, venturing into the performance engineering part, basically the client side uh, performance test part, I was quite confused because of the, uh, I, I always misunderstood the concept of client side performance and server side performance. And all I know was uh, load testing is the only option for performance test, right? So uh, a set of users interacting with our application at the same time and how our app behaves, that's basically it. So that was my understanding when I started venturing into the performance engineering space. And then I, when I started to learn more, I learned that uh, performance engineering got a way more uh, or it's a vast or wide area, which everyone needs to understand. And it's quite interesting that when we start exploring those pointers, it gives us insight about how our applications behave in different, different circumstances. Okay. So uh understanding basics is the core part uh in performance engineering so let's start with the basics first and then we go to the deep diving part so basically uh, what is a mobile app right so an application designed to run on a mobile device which we all are familiarized with we can call it as a mobile app because we all have our smartphones and we all have set of applications installed in that smartphone devices so mobile app is something which runs on our mobile device simply right so there are basically three types of mobile applications. One is native apps, another one is web app, and the last one is hybrid applications. So when it's called native apps, native apps are ones which is created for one specific platform or operating system. Say for example, for iOS, the apps which we download from the app store can be called as native apps. And for Android, the apps which is downloaded from the Play Store can be called as uh, native apps, native Android applications. Uh, so that is the easiest, simplest way to put it. And there are a set of pros and cons. And uh, basically one important pro 
is it gives faster in term it is faster in terms of performance faster and better in terms of performance and the important thing which we need to highlight is whenever there is an update we, it has to be downloaded and since the code base is too different uh, there is higher maintenance cost and since it is installed in our mobile devices it consumes our resources uh, mainly it's our memory so it consumes device memory space and the next one is web application so it is basically the responsive versions of the website that works on any mobile device or os uh, and it is delivered using a mobile browser so you all might be uh, familiarized with uh, familiar familiar with the term called progressive web applications so which is basically a native app running inside a browser so we can call progressive web apps as uh, web application mobile web applications so pros uh, since it works on all devices uh, it is a common code base for multiple platforms so it leads to less maintenance and development cost uh, since it depends on browser, it always need an internet and uh, it actually, uh, the device integration, hardware integration depends on the hard, hard features. And the third one is hybrid application as the name, name impl implies. Uh, hybrid application is a combination of both native and web application, but it is wrapped within a native application. It's not different entity. Uh, it is a native and web application framework combined together or wrapped together in a native app framework itself. And it will be having a screen app icon. It is, it is having a responsive design. It is faster in terms of performance. And it is even able to work offline. And they are really web application that looks more like native. And when it comes to pros and cons, it is quicker and economical and lots quickly and less code to maintain because some of the codes uh, which are web uh, is shared between both the platforms. And it might lack power and speed because it's actually a wrapper of native and web application, right? So in terms of power and speed, it, like, it is actually slower compared to the native applications and certain features might not work on all the devices. So high performing apps are user favorite, like I mentioned before. So one negative experience a customer has uh, with our application can seriously impact our revenue and seriously uh, end our relationship with them, right? So it is important to make sure that our app works seamlessly, uh, considering all the networks, network aspects, uh, considering all the shared resource aspects, and it behaves well on all the mobile devices which we have, right? So when it comes to performance it actually depends on three combined factors one is backend and the one is the network and the third one is how the app itself behaves uh, in a device so do we do we really need to think of mobile app performance uh, put it in the chat whether you guys think is it necessary to consider about mobile app performance testing say yes or no So there are certain objectives uh, in doing mobile app performance testing, right? So we want to ensure that our application is working well when it is uh, having big workloads or user loads. And we have to evaluate our hard work usage. And then we have to determine the capacity of the application. And the fourth one is measure and access the performance of the application in a protocol level. And we should evaluate our app's performance under critical conditions. So, we have a mobile application, we test it. Uh, we want to ensure that it works with all network combinations. We have uh, even 5G started booming, right? So we have to ensure that all the network combinations work well with our application. And say um, uh, we have lower spec devices and how our app behaves in those devices that we have to ensure. Uh, for all these factors, we need to get a user uh, details how which device or os version our users mainly are and then we need to define or benchmark our expectations so that we could effectively do a testing considering the performance aspect of it so uh, in order to bring build a performance centric culture we need to set a proper strategy first otherwise uh, it's just like building something without a proper foundation right so when it comes to building a strategy first thing is to align uh, we need to align the test objectives and we need to align with our business requirements 
in terms of performance expectations because now we are talking mainly about performance so we need to align with the test objectives and we need to understand the business requirements and we need to ex uh, discuss with our stakeholders on their expectations otherwise uh, say they are expecting a transaction of millions for this specific feature and then we are just doing the functional testing part considering one or two uses which is not good enough right so we need to ensure that uh, when we have a set of certain load how our app behaves for that set specific feature or uh, like the frame framework migration story which i shared before when we have a framework migration we should consider our how our application works uh, alongside the other uh, other app application or other shared resources if we don't consider that we only know that when we ship our app is having issues when we when it start interacting with the shared resources so also we should put our users in the middle right you should understand uh, the end user expectations say for me uh, i always prefer high performing applications if it keeps on loading if i'm if i say if i'm buying something from amazon I need to add something to the cart. If it takes five minutes, I will go to another website, right? And I continue my shopping there because I don't want to wait. Uh, mostly for people, uh, it is quite same or similar. They all have the expectation that they don't, we don't have much time, right? So we always want things to be done quicker and faster. And that is mainly the end user expectation for almost all the mobile applications. And then after aligning, we need to identify things, right? So identify the test KPIs. We need to define the or understand or identify the error rates. So we need to define or understand the maximum response time, maximum acceptable response time, and the average response time. Uh, same like what I mentioned, we need to understand the peak number of requests which we could get, and average throughput. Uh, throughput might be familiar for ones who is familiar with the load testing part, uh, server side load testing part number of active users per device and OS, all those sort of things we need to identify to uh, create a proper test plan for our performance test. And then I call it LBS. Uh, so uh, we should consider the latency and bandwidth combinations. And always when it comes to performance testing, we should simulate a real life testing environment. If we are doing it in a mock uh, way, it won't be giving us the purpose of why we are doing it, right? So we should always consider a real life testing environment. Mainly, uh, we could consider like simulating the environment. So uh, latency yeah, is the time that elapses when the information is sent through the network and bandwidth is the maximum capacity that can be transmitted through the network. So bandwidth, higher the bandwidth, uh, it's good in terms of performance. And when it comes to latency, lower the latency, it will be good in terms of performance. And then uh, priority and collaboration. So there will be tons of things, all right? So we have several dots which is available or we have several touch points which is available. Uh, what matters is how, how we prioritize the scenarios. So we cannot do uh, or consider uh, aspects, all the aspects or cover all the aspects. We should prioritize the ones which is really, really needed for us. And uh, without having a proper collaboration with developers and the stakeholders, we could never do that, right? So always collaborate with our developers and stakeholders to understand the expectations in terms of performance and then prioritize the scenarios uh, well. So there are, as I mentioned, there are three important factors when it comes to performance of mobile applications, right? So that is, first one is backend. So most of you will be familiarized with how the backend structure works. So, so when the app is interacting with the server, uh, the response time becomes critical because we are doing something from our front, front end. The front end is calling something from the back end and it literally waits for backend's response to show something again on the front end, right? So the response time plays a major role here. So the things we need to consider is data to and from to the server, number of API calls, server downtimes and implementation of our escalation policies and the fallback mechanisms basically and tools we use for testing the backend is mainly jmeter gatling blaze meter etc etc i just put three names so the backend performance testing part is mainly the server side performance testing part where we define the number of users and where we define the throughput, where we uh, set a benchmark on the expected number of users which who will be accessing the API calls and all. 
And then uh, the second aspect, which is the network. So the performance of app can vary based on the different network combination. So if you are accessing the application from a 2G network, it will behave differently. And if you are accessing it in from a 4G or 5G network, it will be behaving in a different way. Because the key factors is always latency and bandwidth, which goes back to the network combinations. And then the final one, uh, which is the topic of interest for today, uh, the client side. So testing client side performance allows us to understand how our app behaves on a device and how it uses the resources that is shared with other applications. So we uh, need to like the metrics which we will be considering is device resource usage. When I say device resource usage, it means uh, our battery usage, our memory usage, CPU usage, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How the app renders in the mobile device. Uh, what kind of errors we could expect and how we should mitigate them and how we could handle the response times and all. So device resource usage, right? So it's got several components. Uh, it show uh, we need to consider the metrics, which is percentage of CPU usage, memory usage, data sent and received by the application when we interact with it, percentage of battery usage mainly. If your application is consuming more battery, then users tends to uninstall it quite fast. <laughs> and rendering uh, is how, uh, so to explain rendering, it's how our app is drawn on the device. So if you are opening an application, it loads, right? So when it loads in the screen, it is actually drawing the application on the device. And then um, say, for example, if you are playing a game in mobile, right? So you could see, how the app is drawn on the device and then you interact with the game interface and then you play the game you should uh, or you run or, or you do certain things and there could be sometimes the rendering is too slow and the game literally hacks right so that is that is one sort of rendering issue because it takes longer time to render or draw the app on your device so uh, rendering time plays a critical role, frames per second plays a critical role, and render lags, we call it as janks or slow rendering. So if it is taking longer time to render the app, uh, it will be hanged and you couldn't interact further. It keeps on freezing your application basically. So errors, uh, we, we have a set of ex exceptions uh, for iOS and Android and uh, for android especially there is application not responding error in which uh, after a certain point of time if your application is not responding auto automatically android shows a pop-up that you, whether you should wait or you can kill the application right so that is application not responding error and we have crashes which has to be addressed during our performance our client side performance test and response time uh, like what i mentioned uh, it plays uh, one, it is one of the key metric which we need to uh, take into consideration. Time taken to complete an action, we should evaluate. Server response time, we should evaluate. Database response time, network latency, screen drawing time, and how our app behaves in this, during the startup, how our app behaves when it is in the background, and all those things uh, we have to uh, understand and evaluate. So this is generally due to the fact that certain events may not execute in specific period of time, right? So uh, when it is not uh, executed in a specific period of time, our app behaves in unexpected manner sometimes. So if we are considering performance testing aspects earlier in the life cycle, we could uh, make sure that all these aspects are covered during that testing cycle itself. So what problems can we detect? There are four main categories of problems which we could uh, detect during the early performance testing phase. One is memory leak and the other one is screen freezes. And then we could identify crashes earlier in the life cycle and we could I understand the startup issues and the transaction issues on our applications. So why? Uh, why we should understand all these things, right? Why all these matters? So Users are fickle. Uh, they tend to uh, go to our competitor side if our app is not performing well, right? When a mobile application performance doesn't meet the user expectations, 
we will lose our revenue and we will lose our customers. So we should ensure that we are meeting our end user requirements in terms of performance. So uh, you might have heard about like the booming of 5G technologies, right? So with 5G coming into picture, uh, more customers will go online because everything is easily accessible online. And when customers go online, it's basically demand and supply, right? When customers goes online more, more businesses will also go online and uh, more apps will be using features like geotagging, AR, VR, and 5G uh, technology will always give that option to explore further, to bring seamless uh, mobile app user interfaces and user experience. So more companies will be, uh, and the e-commerce landscape will be start leveraging AI, ML capabilities in mobile apps, say like, uh, AR, VR things. Uh, so you don't need to go to the shop physically. You can see from their app that how the thing looks like in a 3D model and you could interact or see like the 3D model, how you, how you can even walk in the middle of the shop. Like, I guess IKEA got the feature. Uh, you don't need to go to the IKEA shop. Uh, you can literally go to the IKEA website and see a 3D view of it. And so it will give a real feel that you are physically present in the shop. So that is the way uh, where the mobile app landscape is getting changed with the advent of 5G. And this itself contributes to the uh, imp importance of having performance-centric strategies in our testing life cycles. So there are a set of tips and tricks uh, which we could we should do. And one is uh, caching images, right? So we have a mobile application, we have a set of images. Uh, if we are loading it every time from downloading uh, from external resources, it takes longer time. So what we could do is cache images. Uh, and if you are doing uh, caching, then it's just like pulling from cache, uh, and which will be much more faster. And compress and resize images, instead of going for higher resolution one, we could go for compressed versions, which is adequately sized. And then uh, we can reuse data templates. So in our application also, say, there are reusable components, which is always developed by our developers and the data templates which they create as reusable entities it helps us to have our app faster and it loads fewer templates by reusing them all the time reduce http requests so uh, use fewer http requests to, to fetch the resources for each page so say you have a home page and you have hundreds of api calls or http requests to load the components in the home page, it will significantly take longer time to load. If you reduce the number of API calls, it will simplify things for your app and it will load the resources faster than you expect. And <laughs> using loading variations, uh, we should always provide a visible feedback to our users uh, and loading variations, right? So make sure our app loads in a faster way, even if it is not. So we could show a spinner that is loading so faster so that our users will think that something is happening faster in the backend side. And they always have a visible feedback that itself keep them uh, interacting with our application or stay in our applications for some more time. And let's load data as you need. We don't need to load all the data at the same time. So that is why we could uh, basically chunk it into smaller things, uh, literally by using the uh, logics called lazy loading or pagination sort of. So you have a search page where you search and you have thousands of requests, right? Thousands of results for that search. And uh, say if you are loading thousand at the same time, your app might, since it has a larger amount of data, your app might take longer time to fetch all the details. So if we do a pagination or if we do a lazy loading structure, it could load 10 results at one time. And as the user scrolls, it loads another 10. And again, as the user rolls, it rolls another time. So that itself speed up the process and it makes it more faster. And creating an offline mode matters. Uh, so gives the option for our users to continue and save the data. Uh, and they could continue from where they drop off when the connection is re-established. And use the right tool for tuning, right? So this is one critical aspect. So performance tuner uh, is one thing which we need. Uh, we should always pick the right tool to analyze the performance of our applications. And our choice was a tool called AppTim. 
it gives more comprehensive reports uh, than the profiling tools such as Android Studio and the instruments which we use, which we relied on before. So our developers, Android developers will be uh, depending on the Android Studio's native profiler and the iOS where depending on the instruments, Xcode instruments. Uh, then we uh, had capturing some data from Firebase. Uh, everything was scattered all over the place. And then when we had the tool called Aptim, uh, everything was comprehensive and available in one stop solution, which was quite helpful for us. And having an APM uh, application performance monitoring system plays a major role because we could get insights about our, how the app performs and how the SLAs are being configured. And we could use New Relic, App Dynamics, uh, Flurry, or Hockey App. Uh, it will monitor a set of performance metrics which we configure, and we will get our insights on the user experience, like average load times, etc., uh, which could give us measure of computational resources as well. So device choice for testing performance, uh, it's a common question which device we should use, right? So it is always preferable that we use real devices to test uh, performance metrics. Uh, that's how we could get actual performance. Uh, but we could always rely on real. And then also there is cloud options. So we could go for cloud devices, but it's advisable to avoid emulators and simulators. Uh, instead use real devices or cloud devices. So what helped us, like I told you guys before, uh, we were using AppTeam, uh, and the tool that helped us during the phase of moving forward and the performance-centric testing. Uh, it was a one-stop place for most of our comprehensive mobile app performance tests, and it acts as a performance tuner uh, for us, which gives us deeper performance analytics and includes uh, response time, uh, resource consumption, how our apps behaves on startup, and the main thing uh, it helps is uh, we could do the functional testing part, having Aptim running in the background. So one functional test phase will also cover the performance test phase. So whenever we do a functional test, it is actually capturing performance related metrics in the background. And the same, uh, it works for automation as well. Along with the automation script, we could integrate Aptim CLI tool, which will give performance related metrics when we run the automated functional test. So let's take a cube demo on the CLI tool and then we come back. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to give a deep dive on Aptim CLI tool. Uh, you could find the Aptim desktop version, how it works from a previous talk, which I did for uh, STET section of for QA Fox community. Uh, that one, the link will be shared later so you can explore that. So now it's about CLI tool only. So like what I mentioned, there is a test ng uh, test, which could be integrated. So we have this test ng file, YML file, where you configure which, which is your app file, and then you could specify your package name, and then you say this is the test file, which is your code. And then you have a threshold file, which defines all the threshold, which is dependent here, like app size, you have a specific value, and then CPU average, you have a specific value sort of. And you could also do a startup test for your Android uh, and iOS application. This one is only Android. Uh, and then you say five iterations with all these four devices. So four devices will be running the test. And for five iterations, it will be evaluating cold, warm, and hot uh, app startup things. So cold means uh, it's a fresh opening of your app. Uh, when you interact with the app for the first time, it is a cold launch. And if you are taking the app from the background and you are interacting with it, it's a warm launch. And then uh, if it is cold, it's longer time in the, running in the background and then you are interacting with it again. Uh, so the timeout is set as 15. And then uh, there is threshold for startup time as well, which I set up. And it will be evaluating based on this startup time. So let's take a quick test uh, for configure this one. And during that time, I will take you to the report, which we already have. So here, this is our staging apps test run, which you could see which ran for two minutes. Our test, uh, we have two functions for here. One is a login option, a login function, and the another one is a search function, which you could see from here. This is just a code, which I did for uh, this demo. So login is there. And then uh, we have a search deal function, which searches for a deal in our application. And then if you come here, you could see that uh, based on the threshold, it actually shows the metrics here. You could see insights based on that and how many passed and failed your app size. You will be having that. <coughs> and the warnings, it will be in yellow color. 
and the errors which will be in the red color and you could see the thread count and CPU usage and everything. If you drag like this, you can see the detailed uh, CPU usage based on for your application. And if I go here, you could see this one is same test ng test uh, and here there is events which is aptim marks which i mentioned this is for aptim's uh, demo application itself so you could see add to cart uh, which happened in the time frame of 26 to 27 and uh, for cpu and all those sort of things happened on this time duration and you could see the how our app worked during that phase or that events which is set up from the back and this is basically the startup test. You could see that that count, memory total, rendering, and all from here. And what you could even do is to, so there is an option. So you have several test runs in AppTeams Cloud Workspace, and you could set up the threshold from here, Cloud also. And you could select two different uh, test and you can always compare the sessions which will give you insight how your app is being processed uh, like compared to the previous version how the app behaves in the new version right so it will always be always give us a comparative analysis uh, on how our app progressed which is quite cool and which is quite uh, helpful for all of us and then here it's running in the background it will be loaded in a few minutes time so let me go through this iOS report. So here also you could see for iOS also the same matrices are being evaluated and you could see how much the CPU is being used, how much the memory is being used, how the app renders and how the network is consumed and how it consumes power as well. And it, it also gives a detailed log which could be shared with the developers so that they could get more performance related insights and it's helped them for PC debugging purposes. Okay, and then, yeah, basically, Aptim is our one-stop solution to do the performance testing part uh, for uh, along with our functional tests. Uh, and sometimes we leverage for this automation as well. The automation scripts are integrated with AWS Device Farm. So this, your test scripts will be running against AWS Device Farm, but we are still exploring the options to integrate with the CLI, uh, the CLI to the CI tool, uh, which is basically uh, uh, direct integration for our PR. So whenever we have a PR in our GitHub, uh, it will run the Aptim CLI tool, and then it will evaluate based on the thresholds. And if it is throwing a warning or something, we will block the PR. So it gives us early feedback instead of being uh, like reactive. We could be more proactive in terms of performance related metrics as well. So this is downloaded from AWS uh, Device Farm. This is a video of our test. This is what happening in the background, which you could see from the console. So this is if I scroll, this is our application. Uh, this is a functional test. It goes through here, and it logs in the user, and you could see here. And then we go to the search page, we search for something, and we validate that. So that is basically the test which is happening in here right now. And you could see all the test cases which I ran for fake staging, and you could see the device OS, device name, and you have the filters for this uh, device names and all. So if you are doing some sort of benchmarking, what you could do is you could select the same device OS or same device. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't make sense, right? So you run a test in Pixel 3, and you got set of metrics. And if you are doing that same test in Pixel XL and comparing these two results, it's not ideal. So you have different versions of application which you uh, need to test uh, with Pixel 3 first and Pixel XL first, and then you compare Pixel 3 related ones, and then you compare Pixel XL related ones. So it, it will give more insight on how the app is being progressed in terms of performance for Pixel 3, and it will also give for Pixel XL. If you compare these two, then it is not ideal because it's two different devices with two different specifications. All right, perfect. So our test is being completed and the reports is being uploaded in Aptim's cloud. You can see it here. And the functional test, if you could refer here, you could see that two tests were there. One is our login and the search uh, deal, uh, both of which is passed in terms of functional aspect. And then uh, the report URL is here, which you could directly access. And then we had set of thresholds defined for the apps, which you could find here, thresholds. Test ng Android. I had an app size warning for this much, CPU for this much, and moderate is this much, and warning is this much. So if you go here, you could relate this with the metrics which we defined or benchmarked here, 
the app size there is a warning because it's uh, x more than the threshold which we defined and cpu max is also the warning which is 50 was our defined one and then all these are uh, moderate ones so if since we have these three warnings the threshold related test is failed only the functional part is passed and the performance related test is basically failed which will uh, give us the metric related information so that we could fix it and uh, sh ship our application after fixing all this uh, warning related stuff yeah so basically that's it for the cli tool execution which i wanted to show with you guys and there is also aptim desktop application which you which we will be using for the functional test uh, which is happening manually and uh, that one you could refer to the previous session which i did which i will be sharing in the references part so yeah we have seen a cube demo on how aptim works and how we use it in our tests using aptim for functional and automated tests now let's continue so i just wanted to remind you guys that uh, you got it right right so we need to consider the performance centric aspects uh, in our testing phase and it could be done earlier in the life cycle, uh, something like a shift left approach, right? So if we are not meeting in terms of performance, uh, our user will be going to our competitor's website. That's a gentle reminder for all of us. And like, it should be a mix of proper strategy and it should be a mix of proper tactics and uh, all the good collection of metrics and tools. Uh, if there is not a good collection of metrics and tools, we cannot find a Decide business results. So you should always consider that it is having a proper um, tool and metrics. So I would highly recommend you all to go through these resources once if you are planning to include performance tests uh, in your testing life cycle. And uh, you could refer to the STET session, which I mentioned uh, during the demo, which gives you a walkthrough on how the Aptim uh, desktop version works and the, some of the demo on uh, how the just ng uh, scripts for automation also works along with aws device farm so with that said uh, thank you so much for listening to me and i hope you have learned some insights about client-side performance tests it's been a pleasure and i'm here to answer your questions in the chat uh, thank you so much everyone